So over the last couple of weeks, we haven't really been able to get much done here at the Skunk Works. We're doing a lot of running around back and forth to the Hot Rod Reunion and, you know, uh, taking care of merch orders. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Really appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, we have been coming back and forth and picking away at our projects, our ongoing projects over here. So first, the Ram Charger. So we left off with this thing last week or the week before was I was, we was going through the, that rat's nest of wiring that was under the hood. So what we've decided to do with this car is go carbureted with it. And we're also going retro electronic. We're gonna bring this into line with the rest of our fleet. So it's gonna get the old style alternator. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a minute. Um, but what I did here, here, come around here. So what we did here is we eliminated the, the, the computer, we opened up that harness. Uh, this, we made our, our separate headlight harness or light harness. Uh, so that's all hooked up and ready to go. Um, these wires right here, we have to sort through these now. Uh, these are the various controls. We got the, the, the blower motor, the, the ignition switch is gonna be in here, the starter relay. Uh, all of these different wires are gonna be sourced and harnessed out to where they have to be. And whatever's left over that would be included in the computer system will be eliminated. So, like I said, we're going to bring this car in line with the rest of our fleet, which is like, you know, early to mid 70s. So, it's going to get the old style alternator. See, like, here's the bracketry, and uh, here's the type of alternator that, that was used on this, and this was regulated through the computer. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the earlier style Chrysler alternator with the external regulator and modify this bracket to fit it. We're going to keep the small, the, the, the rotary style AC compressor and get all of that hooked up so it's going to be. The, um, so I, here's, here's the first non-Mopar rant you're ever going to hear on Uncle Tony's Garage. I've worked on dozens of these TBI cars, trucks over the years. Uh, just normal repairs, right? You know, the sensors and, and, and whatnot. But I never had the occasion to actually open up the harnesses on one of these. And what I found when I got into this was the most Mickey Mouse assortment of wiring I've ever encountered. Uh, it looks like what happened was Chrysler just kept the same basic harness. And as they changed systems, they just added more stuff to it. Like the main power feed from the battery. Where is it? Oh, well, oh here it is. This thing here. Now, I've, I've cut away... I mean, this this had a whole extension on it. These wires were all, I mean, it was just a convoluted mess. It was all taped together and bundled up under that plastic sheathing. Um, but I've simplified it as much as possible. I've consolidated everything into where it's got all of its fusible links in one shot. And this will get, just get combined with the starter, uh, you know, the, the, the cable that runs out to the starter and the battery cable. But it, it was, I mean, it, seriously, it was junk. If you're dealing with one of these late 80s, early 90s TBI Mopars, you know, you've got an electrical disaster hiding under that plastic. I would, I would take a really good look at it if I were you. Um, the motor, this roller cam 318 is, uh, is toast. It's, uh, it's locked up solid. We'll probably, we're, we're going to pull it out and we'll probably use it as a future build with something. Uh, but in the meantime, what we're going to do is just put a regular, uh, earlier 318 two barrel in here just to get this truck up and running down the road, you know, down the road, right? Um, I'm picturing like a, 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 a nice, 360 with a six pack in here uh, or even possibly a first generation Hemi. I'd love to do a 331, 354, 392, you know, as a, as a driver motor, you know, I think that'd be really cool. It'd fit in here, you know, but anyway, that's all, that's all way down the road for right now. It's just going to get a standard 318 two barrel, basically the same exact engine as in our swinger. The idea is just to get this truck functional up and running. It's also completely rust free. We've been through this thing one into the other and it's just, it's pristine. I mean, we're really lucked out with this thing. Now, bottle rocket. So, here's the story with this car. We're going to complete it as Project Bottle Rocket. And I, I'm, I'm very confident we'll be able to see the 10 second zone with this thing. It may cost us a few pistons, but it's going to go there. Um, but, I have a future plan for this car now. So, here's the thing. We don't have a dyno. We don't have a dyno available to us. 
we don't really want a dino. I mean, dinos are great. You know, it's, it's, it's a great laboratory thing. It's great for breaking and stuff. But honestly, when you're doing a back-to-back -back comparison of componentry, let's just say, you, know, you want to try different carburetors or carburetor versus fuel injection, or you can get your peak numbers, and you can get, and you can, and you could, you know, you could chart the curve with a dyno, but it's not the same. It's not the same as when you're on a drag strip, and there's there's the way the motor lays the power down onto the track. You don't have the wind resistance. You don't have the air going through. It's it's apples and oranges. What you get on a dyno is theoretical. What you get on a drag strip is what you're actually dealing with. So, Bottle Rocket is going to become a rolling dyno. We're going to set this car up. Fortunately, these late B bodies have a giant engine compartment. Um, you could fit anything in here, in and out, it, very easy to work on. You could swap engines in, in like no time at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this car up with all various systems so that whatever we want to test, we'll be able to plug it into this car, run it to the track and go. And the manual transmission is a big, bo big bonus with that because we don't have to actually change the drive line to do any of that. So we can go big block, small block, slant six, hemi. We could put anything, you know, we could dream up between these frame rails and test it without having to disturb the rest of the car. We are looking for some parts for it right now. We'll be heading up to Carlisle in a few weeks uh, uh, to see if we can buy them there, but if one of you guys has any uh, a, a package that we can use, I'll tell you what we need, right? We need a small block scatter shield right now. Uh, we need a Z-bar, a B-body Z-bar. We need a um, shifter. We're looking for a 1976 to 87 pickup truck 833 OD setup. We're looking for the, the shifter the shifter box itself. We're looking for that bracket that bolts it to the, to, the, to the transmission and moves the shifter up and back a little bit. And we're looking for the rods and the levers. 1976 to 87 Dodge pickup with an 833 overdrive transmission. So if you've got these things, you want to make us a package deal, get a hold of us at, where, where should they get a hold of us? Uncle Tony's Garage at gmail.com. Did you hear her? Uncle Tony's Garage at gmail.com. Um, so that's pretty much it. We'll be William Chop will be back next week, and we'll we'll continue, you know, diving into this thing. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on, and I'll see you tomorrow.